Hello there! My name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video I want to make some art inspired by one of the most acclaimed anime series and a personal top three of mine, Neon Genesis Evangelion. This series follows young protagonist Shinji Akari as he is reluctantly recruited by his father to pilot a mech and defend the city against various kaiju-like monsters known as angels. The scene that I've selected for my artwork comes from the very first episode, when Shinji is brought to Nerve headquarters and first introduced to the Eva. The layout of that encounter, for me, perfectly encapsulates the authority and the intimidation put upon him to become a pilot, and this kind of struggle with expectations and identity is one of the fascinating and core undertones of the series. To get started, I've extracted a few reference images from that scene, and I'm laying in some basic line work to create a foundation. The point of this phase is just to keep things really simple and just kind of get an estimate of the composition and the relative scaling of everything. And then eventually these will be worked up into more detail later. The canvas size I'm using for this work is 320 by 224 pixels. And I selected that because it's one of the resolutions used on the Sega Genesis. And I say one of because it seems there were a few common size variants depending on the exact game. Um, the regional differences, and also whether or not overscan was used. I like the idea of the wider aspect ratio of this 320 resolution for this piece, um, but also part of the overall inspiration and composition here is actually inspired by a game called Shadowrun, which is an action RPG for the Sega Genesis. Although I've never actually had the opportunity to play this game, I like the top-down look with this vertical format of the HUD as well as just the overall aesthetic and the use of dithering in these textures. So a lot of this is going to come into play later on in my artwork. In creating the actual environment, I also tried to use an 8x8 tile grid here to assist in a lot of the sizing and alignment. The actual detailing here isn't necessarily attempting to be the most efficient formal tile set or anything like that. Uh, in fact, I was mainly just interpreting a lot of the details directly from the screenshots. But using a grid like this at the very least just helped to guide some of the decision making, especially when it's just kind of rigid elements like the bits of the walkway here. Something like the Ava on the other hand is more of an organic or custom set piece. So I took my funny looking rough sketch there and rescaled it uh, into a more appropriate size and then got to work creating an actual proper line work version of it. On this canvas, that full design here is about 60 to 70 pixels in height. So it's very much like making a detailed portrait. And my technique here was just starting the line work very approximate and then continuing to reshape and improve the accuracy as I went along. Even with the generous resolution here, it can still get pretty tight when fitting some of those finer details like the teeth or the area around the mouth. But sometimes I'll just nudge the line work around by a pixel or two if I need to make room for a certain detail element like that. And with that line work in place, I put in some preliminary shading. And I'm continuing on here just using a grayscale palette for now, just to keep things really simple and kind of focused on the construction. Following that large piece now are some of the smaller elements in this mock-up, which are these little character sprites. This was a fun thing to approach directly after because there's obviously this massive difference in size between the two. So I had to find that right balance between a character sprite that's not only in scale with the Ava, uh, but also something that'll still be readable and recognizable as each unique character design. So the sprites here are around 20 pixels tall and they're fairly minimal, but a way that I'm getting a little bit more definition out of this small area is just by doing some subtle contouring with the shading. Uh, sometimes if you make a few pixels darker around the corners, you can squeeze out a bit more depth and definition and it can also help to sort of thin out certain areas if you need to as well. For the sprite of Shinji's father looming up there in the control room, uh, I wanted to do this thing where he's actually just a silhouette, and then really his most notable feature will just be to have that iconic glasses shine showing. I'm also experimenting with this technique of like using some of the shade pixels to kind of soften up the edges of his silhouette. Uh, which I guess is just sort of like anti-aliasing, uh, but the important thing is that it kind of helps like improve the shaping of the silhouette more than just doing it as like a one-bit style silhouette would be. So you can see those softer pixels placed around there, and then I continued on from here with similar kinds of detailing around the environment. I'm trying to create texture and weathering by using various steps of brightness, 
and kind of going back to that Shadowrun idea with uh, the dither textures and stuff like that. I was suspecting that the coloring for this one was going to be pretty involved, um, requiring a wide range of tones. So that's why I've been working in grayscale this whole time. For any kind of ambitious coloring, I find it's really easiest to start in grayscale like this. That way you're just defining the relative brightness and contrast of everything. And then once that's in a good spot, we can colorize it using that as a starting point. In order to give myself an easier time making that transition to the colored version, I've isolated various pieces of the artwork onto their own layers, based on large sections that'll be dominated by one color or a small handful of colors. So what I can do with an isolated layer is to command or control click on it and select just that area, and then create a new layer and apply a layer mask to this layer, which is this little icon down here. This allows you to paint whatever you want on that layer, and it'll only show through that applied mask, which means you can be really loose with the brushing and you won't ever have to worry about going outside the lines. So to add an additional bit of Photoshop magic on top of this, I'm also gonna color that layer using a gradient map, which is gonna apply an entire spectrum of tones that we can define over that spot. And it'll make that assignment according to how light or dark the area underneath it is, which is where that grayscale work from earlier comes into play because it'll be making those definitions. So for the Ava, I've selected a range of purple tones, and then for the rest of the artwork, I've gone through to select isolated sets of colors using the same method. After assigning those colors, I go back in and kind of shift the hues around to start introducing pops of color everywhere to really broaden the selection and get more accurate to the source imagery. Now, one of the things that inevitably happens with this separate and scattered approach is that we've now got a lot of individual colors at play and some of them are so nearly identical that they might as well just actually be the same color. For instance, this beige tone here that's backlighting Shinji's father is almost the same color as that used for the skin tone on the sprites near the bottom. But right now, they're actually two different colors. So what I do in a situation like this is just to select both of them and set them to the same color, either choosing whatever the better looking one is or finding some compromise between them. Another example is how one of the blue tones on the wall here nearly matches that used on the Ava's mouth. So again, I force these two into just being the same identical color. By reducing the color count in this way, we've made the piece a little bit more cohesive in a sense. And this is just one of those things that I find to be fun uh, to identify these kinds of color palette efficiencies. Obviously this idea eventually breaks down at a certain point, like you're never gonna get to the point where you're like, you're not gonna believe it, but I got the entire palette down to just one color. Uh, in fact, obviously like none of this is really necessary at all. But again, for me, this is something that I get excited about. Just this idea of multi-purposing colors within a piece rather than introducing new ones. So after that round of adjustment, we can see that I've actually brought the overall palette down from 28 colors down to 17 colors, uh, including the black. And the difference is not really that dramatic. And I say that in a good way here, actually, as in, you can get a lot of mileage out of a moderate palette if you're willing to make substitutions here and there. Going along with this idea, my other objective here was that I wanted to try giving a lot of the surfaces a really vibrant highlighting to them. And I'm trying to do this by applying highlights that step from dark to light using a wide range of hues. So the result is that we get these really colorful, rainbowy or iridescent highlights on things. Now, it is one of those sort of motifs that I feel you kind of have to lean hard into it to make sure that it feels cohesive across the piece rather than just appearing once. So I found spots on the platform and the handrails to kind of add all these different colored highlights. It was a fun bit of experimentation toward the end here and I think it brings a lot of cohesion to the piece uh, just by having the full palette always have a presence like that. The final thing here is gonna be the HUD design. Now you probably noticed I left that little strip off to the right this whole time, and that was to have some space to try out that vertical style HUD uh, with a character portrait for Shinji and some inventory items. The anime series has also got some really iconic imagery for all sorts of info screens and alert screens within Nerve, so I wanted to definitely bring in some of that as well because it wouldn't quite feel like Ava without some of that imagery. So now that that's all coming together, let's go ahead and take a look at the final piece. So here is Sega Genesis Evangelion.
All right, so one of the last additions here was this bit of detailing on the outer edges. Uh, there's all these sort of pipes and wires and things like that. Um, for that, I'm just mainly using the darker tones because my thought was that it would uh, work as sort of a gradient that helps the environment just sort of slowly fade off into the darkness there. And we'll go ahead and close out with some CRT time now to take a look at how that hyper vibrant coloring turns out on there. So I hope you enjoyed this one and thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.